That's probably 100 fish, Ricky. 99. <laughs> 99 fish in that school. Look at them. Look at them pushing oh, water. Oh, you're going to get hooked up. Oh. <laughs> so. 98 now, right? <laughs> oh, son. It's too cold to be out here fishing today, Robbie. That's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, that's a good fish right there. Look at that fish. Oh. I'm starting to work a sweat up. I know, and I got a bad elbow. And a, a bad foot. <laughs> We're handy. <laughs> Grady White Boat's reputation for designing ruggedly elegant fishing boats is legendary. Our attention to quality, detail, and customer service is unmatched. From our Fisherman 180 and Coastal Explorer series to the unrivaled Canyon 456, you'll find no boat that rides better and offers more fishing amenities. Go ahead, experience fishing at its best. Get the Grady. Hello and welcome to the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Well, this past winter it got really cold and Joe, after that polar vortex, we went fishing. Well, we did. It was three, actually three days after we had the real cold temperatures that we um, had a trip scheduled for Bear Island, behind Bear Island in the shallows, the marshes uh, near Swansboro for, for drum. And something we've been trying to do for two or three years and finally everything worked out. We had the tide right, we had the lighting right, no wind and you're, you're, you're looking for moving schools of fish in about two feet of water, and uh, we found fish and we caught fish. What can we expect in gear time today? The guys will go back and, and show us uh, how they rigged up for it. It's pretty simple. Uh, the main thing is you have to be real quiet. You're in shallow water and you have to be stealthy in your approach, but uh, everything came together and we caught fish. And Donna's got a recipe today for shrimp cakes. Shrimp cakes, really good to see, uh, uh, recipe from her today, and uh, tune in. All right, it's all about winter reds today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. All right, Rob, you got me out here this freezing morning. What are we going to be catching this morning? Oh, we're going to be chasing puppy drum. Um, All right. It's uh, the middle of January. It's been really, really cold. We have uh, had some cold nights, days too. Yeah, um, a lot of these fish that were in the surf in the late fall, early part of winter have moved back in here uh, for protection and survival. And, oh, yeah. and they're feeding. They're schooled up real well, and uh, we're hoping we can get on them pretty quick All this morning. All right, couldn't, couldn't find a better morning. Look at it. No, it's Jeez. it's slick. This is the conditions you really, really got to have this time of year because you got flood be... tide. Well, yeah, that's that's what you want so you can get back in there on them with your I boat. But uh, flooded tide, calm, it's about as perfect as it gets. Well, let's get on. Let's do it. Robbie, this location we're going now. You mentioned survival earlier. Yeah, I know in the river, I'm going back up into deep creeks. Is this right. similar or? No, uh, here it's more survival from the uh, porpoises, I think, oh, I mainly. Got you. Yeah. It's really shallow, actually, where we're going to be fishing today. Uh, no deeper than about 16 okay. inches. They're just and, hiding uh, out and feeding, huh? Yeah, I mean, they're trying to find what they can feed on, and, right. you know, the porpoises just can't get up in here and get them. Right. Uh, right. Plus, the, the water temperature does tend to be a, a few degrees warmer, which is good on them, too. So. Oh, yeah, especially it, on these sunny days. It probably warms it up, doesn't it? It does. Uh, you can see it warm up as much as a 5 to 10 degrees, somewhere in there. Oh, yeah. This here is, uh, looks like we're seeing some fish up here moving. It's kind of why it's really important to have this calm weather, Ricky. Cause, yeah, uh, I see. Uh, man, you can see everything that flinches out there. You can. A lot of times, if you if you can't see, it's you just kind of got to rely on where uh, you know you've caught them in the past. Exactly. Which that's, you know, can be uh, a good successful way to do it too. Oh but. yeah, spending a lot of hours out here like you do. Yeah, but uh, looks like we're seeing some push up here a little bit, moving around. A lot of times once you get on them and you start to catch a few, you'll see them moving even more then. Ricky, there you can see uh, there's a school of fish on top of that sand shoal. Yes, it is. You can see them uh, plain as day with this slick water. There, there he is. is. Like, like a trout. <laughs> That's old red fish, Robbie. What you got? You put us on them, boy. He's got a lot more spunk than you would think. Yeah, he don't, I thought done. it was old trout there. You catch old trout that pulls like that. <laughs> Beauty, man. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good job, Good start. Right? There you go. Robert, you put me on that one, son. Yeah. Oh, Beauty. It's about a 22-inch fish, probably. 
You were telling me all the day about that sea lice. Yeah, some of them have these uh, parasites in the in the winter. It doesn't hurt so them. Look at that. That is beautiful. That hurt them. It's just a cold weather parasite. You see him come up shaking his head like old trout. Yeah, he was trying to put a show <laughs> on for you, make you feel like feel like you're at home. Appreciate that, boy. <laughs> Get you one. Yeah, let's see if we can't find right that Right in front of us. I yeah. see them right there. Hit them. All right. There's still some in that grass right there. Dog, I should have threw right there. God, it's thick over there. I think you just got bit. Oh, you're so on. There ain't no, you're on. Hooks it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him pushing. Look at him pushing. You know what I was doing. I was wanting to make sure that fish was uh Yeah. You let him swallow that one. He, I don't think he knows he's hooked. Oh yeah. Get him Robin right there. I don't want to do it to him. Go ahead. <laughs> Get him right there. That fish right there is mad now. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, I'm gonna reach right down and just pick him up. That's what it, it's usually what Maybe. I do. Maybe. <laughs> he said, no, you ain't gonna pick me up yet. Are you gonna hook him in, hook him in the tail? No, he's in the <laughs> top of the roof of the head. It's amazing how aggressive they are. Oh, it is. Robbie, I let that one have it a little bit long. Yeah. You saw it before I did. I thought I had an oyster rock, to be honest with you. Yeah, he was swimming off with it. You can see your line moving. <laughs> he, of course, I. He you, thumped it and uh, just sat there. You did the right thing. I had missed one right before you, and I don't think I let him have it long enough. A little jumpy. Pretty work, though. Look right, there, here, right here. Right here on us. Get him right there. Let's see if we can't get a bite. You got him. There's a few in here. Oh, that's the thing about them, you can sure sneak up on them. Yeah, they don't get a lot of pressure right now because everybody's duck hunting. Right, right. Get it, Robbie. I just got, I feel them swimming through my line. Good night. I keep thinking that's a trout. What? <laughs> it's a red <laughs> fish. You've been, you've been <laughs> trout fishing too much. They ruined me. He don't know he's hooked. You see, y'all ain't supposed to be in here this time of year. Leave us alone. Need some help. Let we'll me know. That's a good fish now. Yeah. A lot better class of fish this year than we were having last year. Yeah, I know you telling me this was them 14, 15 inch fish you were catching. That was, we had a class change where a lot of our bigger fish went on to make some babies. Beautiful fish, Robbie. Yes, sir. Three spots on each side. They're all unique Crazy. in their own way. Tore up my bait, boy. Pretty. Oh, it is beautiful. Oh, mean looking, mean looking red fish. Acme. You gonna let me catch Where'd one? Where'd it go? I'm done. <laughs> I done had my day, bro. No, sir. That was, you've oh. caught how many sitting in one spot? I know oh, you just yeah. crush them in here. They're here, it'll, it'll come here in a second. Finally. He's coming to you any hard yeah. as he can go. Finally. Well, you were. You were treating your charter right by letting me catch the first <laughs> ones. That's all you were doing. Oh. Sounds good. Ricky, I still got a little uh, bum, a yeah. little I bit know. of a bum foot. <laughs> if you'll help me yeah, out. I got you, brother. Oh, I got you, buddy. Uh-uh. Thank you. Yeah, man. Look at that blue tail, Robbie. Yes, sir. You got him all excited this morning. <laughs> <laughs> when they're lit up like that, they'll, their tail is as blue and pretty as it gets. A lot of people call them redfish, but they're more of a silver, mm -hmm. silver looking fish here. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Yes, sir. Nice, yes, sir. Boy, nice. Let's get him back in. I want to do it again. Yeah. 
that don't get old, does it? No. <laughs> Look in front of you, Robert. Pop him right there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there's a mess of them right here. Tell you what, ain't nothing better than seeing a fish and casting you, to it. You mm. go that way, I'll go this way. All How right, about deal. that? Robbie, 12 months out of the year, I know you're doing this at least nine, ain't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have drum year round. Right. And people I, just don't understand that. You know, they think wintertime, everything's kind of over with, but man. I tell you, if you, you know, uh, the best drum days numbers wise, I've, I always have is from generally from uh, late December right. to uh, May. Yep. These fish are in humongous schools. Yeah, uh, as you demonstrated. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a little bit different type of fishing in the summer months. We still have schools. A lot of times you'll find them like this too. and. You can catch them on top water plugs, things oh, yeah. like that, which the fish are a little more aggressive, but uh, there's still fish here year round. Nothing wrong with this, brother. No, no, it's a, we're blessed here with a great fishery, there's no doubt. That's probably 100 fish, Ricky. 99. <laughs> 99 <laughs> fish in that school. Look at them. Look at them pushing water. Oh, you're going to get hooked up. Oh. <laughs> so. 98 now, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir. It's too cold to be out here fishing today, Robbie. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Son, that's a good fish right there. Look at that fish. Oh, I'm starting to work a sweat up. I know, and I got a bad elbow. And a, <laughs> a bad foot. <laughs> we're handy. <laughs> Hold on, boy. Ricky, if we were fishing a tournament. Oh, man, what are you talking about? <laughs> we'd have a good weight right here, two casts. Oh, Lord. Look, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Man. You got him there. He'll grab that jig head. Oh, got right him. I got him. I got him. I got him right there. They're like they're like twins, they don't they? They are, son. Is That's that the thing not, about them here. There. Is that not beautiful? They're schooled up, and they're all about the same size. Uh uh uh. Yes, sir. I got him hooked good. Right to ten. Ain't hurt a bit either. No. Oh, he had that one good, didn't he? Yeah, I might have to do a little dental work on it. Let me get mine loose and I'll help you with it. Cold, Robbie, so they don't suck it down right to start with. But you give them a second or two. They'll hit it. I uh, That's why they don't really hit a top water as good this right. time of year. Tell you what they do when they get on there is pool. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> fish. Right. Uh. Let's do it again. You ain't going to have to talk me into it. All yeah, right, it's like, he acts like a trout again, don't he? He did. <laughs> <laughs> but... Oh, <laughs> another Saw good fish. Big. Look at that thing. They he don't been normally shake it. He's been hanging around them a while. Let me get out of the way. That might be the best one we've had today. It is a party one now. Might need to help you with that one. Yes, yes sir. Let me slide a net under him. That is beautiful right there. You gonna bring him up here or not? <laughs> do got what that you TFO in a bind. Do what you can do, right? <laughs> there you go. That's an upper slot oh, fish there. Uh, Robbie, I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought I had another oyster rock to start with. Start you know. pulling back. Oh, he did, <laughs> but let me get that hook out right there. That's a pretty oyster. <laughs> yeah, I like him like that. You had a good hook set on him. Come here, baby. Watch that jig head. This is what's good about that old rubber net. All right, you got him. He don't want to come out of there. Here she is. Oh, baby. That's a oh, nice upper slot that fish. Not, that is beautiful now. It ain't hurt a bit. Uh. All right, well, appreciate that. Yes, sir. <laughs> See if we can't find that bunch you. of fish again. So if they're all like that now. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a good class of fish. That upper middle to upper slot on light tackle. He runs uh, away from here too now. Yeah, he was mad at you. Not like he was none too cold, did he? <laughs> they're actually coming right up to the boat. There we go. Get him, boy. Mm. Turn look, at, look, look at this school look right here. That's right, Ricky, push them back in there. <laughs> no, they're getting by me now. Look at all them fish. 
sun, that's beautiful. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Be our last shot too, because this water is getting out of here. Beautiful. Man, that was perfect there. Let me get this lure out of the water before it gets it. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That was in about a foot of water, wasn't it? Yeah, half that. I can give you a little help here. Oh, man. He weren't going up perfect to you. Don't hurt him? No, sir. See, he don't have hardly any of them. You recognize pairs. him? Yeah. <laughs> I know his mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Ricky, it's your turn. Cast back in there. I think you'll get bit. Let me tell you how many I saw while you were fighting that one. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a hundred. <laughs> And a yeah. lot of them, a lot of them turned and went right back up there. They're here. Joe, earlier you mentioned the tide. How important is that? Well, that that type of fishing is all based on tide. We had about a two-hour window to go in and catch these fish, and it worked out just about right. And and that's the, the biggest thing is is getting in because it's so shallow back there. If you don't get out quick, you could be back there for six or eight hours waiting for the tide to change again. All right, let's go to school. Let's go to gear time. Robbie, you called it. You told me to get down here and you were on the money about these uh, these reds. They've been on today, but this tide is pretty critical, isn't it? It is. Uh, it started out pretty cool this morning uh, in the low 30s. Uh, yeah. The fish were back in the marsh a little further and the tide was high, so we were able to get in in back in there with them. Uh, it's falling in a hurry. That's why oh, we're, yeah. we got to get out, but uh, <laughs> it is crucial to get in and out of here in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And your, your baits, that uh, old jerk shad, that's Number one for you? Uh, that's probably my go-to bait. Um, any of the soft plastics, DOA makes yeah, a good I'm one. DOA. Uh, Salty Bay, uh, Zoom, all of them make good baits to use this for. They're tough plastic baits. Yep. Uh, Scented is a really key factor. Uh, sometimes they're picky. Oh, I, yeah. You noticed I was using uh, this blue uh, blue crab I procure. It makes, makes a, a difference. It yeah. does. They'll pick it up quicker. And that jig head, you like a, a good stout hook for these reds right a heavy gauge hook because if you notice they're nicer fish they will yeah. they will straighten it out eighth mm -hmm. ounce uh 20 pound fluorocarbon and with the oyster rocks i saw yeah and i'm not really afraid too bad but no. you can get cut off you can uh and 20 20 pound braid is what i usually use on a drum rod and i know i'm throwing this uh six nine tfo rod yeah medium action done fine you know you like to get a little bit of bend out of them yep. wear them down that uh that seven foot to six and a half to seven foot medium is perfect for these fish. And that ten diameter, ten pound test, uh, four diameter, right? Braid, and that's man, that's that's perfect. kind of what all of us guides tend to mm -hmm. use. And uh, that twenty five, uh, this is a smoke by Quantum, and yeah, and just a twenty five hundred series, three thousand. That's about yeah. the perfect size. Yeah, with a good smooth drag, you can enjoy it. Yep. Well, man, I appreciate you getting me down Thank here. Thank you so much. Anytime. All right, brother. Thank, Thank you. If you'd like to try this kind of fishing, contact Captain Rob Hall. There's his number on your screen. Now, let's catch up with Donna. She's in the kitchen with a recipe for shrimp. Today in Simple Cooking, we're going to be making some shrimp cakes. Great flavors going on. We have some yogurt dip that we're going to add with it. And we also have these great cakes that have nice, a lot of crunch and a lot of flavor. So let's go ahead and get started. I've chopped up my pound of shrimp and it's in my bowl. We're going to add to that some cilantro that we have chopped. We're going to also add some green chilies to these. And green chilies, really, they're not hot. They just have a lot of great flavor. We're going to also add some Mexican corn some red onions that we have chopped. And you wanna make sure that it's chopped pretty finely. We're also gonna add some roasted red bell peppers, which add lots of great flavor. They're a little tangy. And one egg, some Dijon mustard. So you can see we've got lots of flavors going on in here. And some mayonnaise. Just we're gonna mix all that together and then we're going to add some onion hush puppy mix to this as well, so it's going to
hold all of it together and that egg's going to help bind it as well. Great colors too if you notice how the pretty colors that are in here. We're going to add about three-fourths um, of our package of hush puppy mix with onions. You also have that great onion mix as well, flavors. So we're going to mix all that together. Let me turn up my heat. We're going to preheat some oil here. I used a mixture of olive oil and cooking just vegetable oil because olive oil doesn't have it's quite smoke point high smoke point as vegetable oil does so you don't want to scorch anything so we're just going to mix that together until it is thick and if you if you're in an area where there's a lot of humidity or making it during that time you may need to add a little bit more of the hush puppy mix just um, to get it to bind well so we're just going to have that like all mixed together and then I'm just going to use my hands. You can use a scoop if you want. And we're going to form these into some patties, like hamburger patty size. Um, also if you want you can use, make them smaller like um, sil silver dollar size and serve them as appetizers which would be great as well. We're just going to flatten those out and then I just like to put mine in my hush puppy mix, some additional on my, plas uh, my um, wax paper here and then I like to coat them. And then we're just going to drop those into our hot oil and cook them until they're nice and golden brown, probably about five to ten minutes because depending on the thickness of your um, patties because you want to make sure that shrimp gets cooked but it cooks really quickly. So we're going to turn those over, cook them on the other side and you're ready to go. Like I said, if you make them the silver dollar size, they'd be great for some appetizers. So let's take a look and see what they look like when they're all finished and they come out. We have the great crunch on the outside that that hush puppy mix will make and then you have all the tender great vegetables inside. We're going to serve it on a corn relish. It's a tomato corn relish where it has tomatoes and corn, the green chilies, and red onion, just a great combination and a little bit of basil in there as well along with our yogurt dip. So it's a great combination of cold, hot, and crunchy. So I hope you enjoy the shrimp cakes, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Carolina Outdoor Journal. Thank you, Donna, for that recipe. Now, Joe, we had like a two-hour window, but it turned out to be productive. It really did. We, there were a lot of fish back there, probably several hundred, according to the captain. I couldn't really see them with the camera because of the glare on the water, but they, you know, there were a lot of fish. and. Everything that just came together, we had the tide right, we had the lighting right, we had no wind, so we could see the, the pushes on the, on the surface. And uh, I think the uniqueness of it is fish of that caliber being in that shallow water in January, and especially after a cold uh, winter like we had. But they're there, and if you've never done it, give Captain Hall a try. And you're right, it was cold. It was. For Joe Albee, I'm John Moore. Thank you for joining us today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Make sure to visit our website for more information. Grady White boats are known for uncompromising quality through exceptional attention to detail. On every model, from 18 to 45 feet, we incorporate exclusive features and quality components that you won't find on any other boat brands. Our exclusive CV2 hull design is ranked highest in every third-party survey done in the marine industry, so every day on the water will be a great day, no matter the conditions. Ask any Grady White owner and they'll tell you, get the Grady.